Now that we're comfortable working with and finding probabilities, we're ready to talk about discrete probability distributions. And then later, we'll talk about continuous probability distributions. First, I want to make sure we, we know what question we're trying to answer. The question for today is, what are discrete probability distributions. And to set this up, we're going to be working with this idea of finding what's called the probability distribution function. Often, this is just abbreviated as PDF, the probability distribution function. And these probability distribution functions have two key characteristics. The first is, for this PDF, each individual probability is between 0 and 1. In addition, if we took all the probabilities and added them together, they would sum to 1. Now, often we'll organize these probability distribution functions by what we call random variables. And a random variable just describes the outcomes of an experiment. Now, a discrete probability distribution is used with countable or discrete outcomes. For example, If we let the random variable x represent the number of movies watched last week, that's a discrete random variable because you only can watch a certain number of movies. We can't do decimals. You either watched it or you didn't. So because this is a countable result, it's a discrete result, and we can collect discrete data. A survey is conducted and it is found that 40% of the respondents watched two movies last week, 50% watched one movie, and the rest watched no movies. We can summarize. the PDF, or the probability distribution function, in a table. And in this table, all we have to do is list the possible results. I spelled countable wrong. Forgot the T in countable. Sorry about that. All we have to do is list the possible results and their associated probabilities. So x is the random variable. People watched either 0, 1, or 2 videos. And then we'll make a column representing the probability that x occurred. 
We're told that 40% watch two movies, so the probability is 0.4. 50% watched one movie, the probability is 0.5. We're not told what percent watched no movies, but if we add what we have together, we see we've covered 90% of the respondents. So there's only 10% left to make it equal 100%, and that must be the 0. And this becomes our probability distribution table. Now, what's nice about being able to organize all the countable possibilities is it allows us to consider the expected value, which is also called the mean, and the standard deviation. of the probability distribution function, or of the PDF. And the formulas for finding these expected values and standard deviations are very similar to the formulas we had for means and standard deviations from chapter 1, but using the probabilities instead of the frequencies. First, the expected value. The expected value is the long-term average, or mean, of the PDF. In other words, if you ran lots and lots of experiments and took the average of the results, what would that expected value or that average result be? And the formula for the expected value, or the mean, is equal to the sum of all the x's times their individual probabilities. This is a good formula to know. So for our example, where we had our number of movies being 0, 1, and 2, and their individual probabilities being 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.4, we can find the average number of movies watched in this survey by making an extra column for x times p of x, multiplying the x value times its probability. 0 times 0.1 is 0. 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. And 2 times 0.4 is 0.8. And if I add those together, that will give me the sum of the x's times the p of x's, which is 1.3. This tells me that the average student or survey respondent watched 1.3 videos last week. The expected value. If I took a whole bunch of students over and over again, I would expect the average to be 1.3. And again, similar to how we found the standard deviation with frequencies, we can find the standard deviation or the spread of our random variables. using the formula that sigma, the standard deviation, is equal to the square root of the sum of the difference between the mean and the value squared times the probability of the values. Again, this would be a good formula to know how to use. And basically, like we did before with finding standard deviation, we're going to make an extended table. So again, our values for the movies were 0, 1, and 2. Their individual probabilities were 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.4. And we're going to start to build this formula by adding columns. The first part of the formula wants the difference between the mean and the value. So our mean, remember, we just found out that the mean was equal to 1.3. We did that in a previous section. So 0 minus 1.3 is negative 
1 minus 1.3 is negative 0.3. And 2 minus 1.3 is positive 0.7. But then our formula says we take that difference and we square it, make them all positive. 1.3 squared is 1.69. 0.3 squared is 0 0.09. And 0.7 squared is 0.49. But then the formula says we need to take that square of the difference and multiply it by the individual probabilities. So we'll take that green column times the second black column. 1.69 times 0.1 is 0 0.169. 0.5 times 0 0.09 is 0 0.045. And 0 0.4 times 0.49 is 0.196. And our formula says. Let's find that sum. Our formula wants the sum of the difference squared times the probability, which is equal to 0 0.169 plus 0 0.045 plus 0.196 is 0 0.41. And we're told the standard deviation is the square root of that value, the square root of 0 0.41, which is equal to 0 0.6. Four, zero, oh, three. So now we know our probability distribution function. That table that we made has an average expected value of 1.3 and a standard deviation of 0.6403. Oh, so that's what we're looking at today is we're taking a look at how to work with these probability distribution functions, specifically the discrete ones. And then in our next few videos, we'll look at some specific types of discrete probability distributions. But for now, take a look at practicing a few of these on the homework. We'll discuss them further in class. Good luck.